friends and welcome to the channel uh, and welcome to a useful a high yield ECG topic. This will be helpful to MBBS students, this will be helpful to an intern working in emergency, this will be helpful to a junior doctor taking care of patients, or for that, that matter any person who is involved in care of patients, any doctor who cares about patients, because someone may ask you an opinion on ECG and this is something you should never miss because this patient ST segment elevation myocardial infarction requires immediate referral and immediate treatment. And this is also high yield for your exams, for your NEET PG or for your INICT because this is a basic ECG that every doctor should recognize. Okay, so let's begin. And by the way, I work as a DM cardiology fellow in Ames, New Delhi. Okay, so I'm involved in care of cardiac patients right and left every day of my life. Now, ST segment elevation, how do you detect ST segment elevation? If you have watched my previous videos, I encourage you to watch some of the basic videos on my channel on ECG. You know the different parts of an ECG and you know what ST segment is, okay? And it is basically the part between the end of the QRS complex and the start of the T wave. That part is known as ST segment, right? But how do you detect ST segment elevation? Consider the two points that are in this figure. The point one, which is the onset of the Q wave. You may take this as your reference point. And then the onset of the ST segment, which is also known as the J point. So that is the point you need to consider. Okay, how elevated is that point with respect to your reference point? How elevated is point two with respect to point one? That is ST segment elevation. Okay. So how do you diagnose ST elevation MI? You need to detect new ST segment elevations at the J point in two contiguous leads. So what do I mean by contiguous leads? I mean two adjacent leads. Lead two and three are contiguous. Lead three, AVF, two, three, they're all contiguous leads. Leads V2, V3, V4, they're all contiguous leads. Side by side leads, okay? And how elevated should the ST segment be for you to worry? one millimeter or 0.1 millivolts all leads except v2 v3 so in these two leads these two precordial leads v2 v3 we have different cutoffs we have cutoff of 0.2 for men more than 40 years 0.25 in men less than 40 years and 0.15 millivolt in women so these things may be asked in a rhino ict okay so as you can appreciate in this ecg look at this the ST segment elevation in more than one lead. ST segment elevation is more than 0.1 millivolts and it's involving more than two contiguous leads. In this situation, it's involving three contiguous leads, two, three, and AVF. So this patient in a given clinical scenario has ST segment elevation myocardial infarction, okay? Well, the next thing that I'm going to talk about is the evolution of ST segment elevation. So when someone starts to have that typical chest pain, how does the ECG evolve over time? The very first change that you will notice provided the patient comes very early in the chest pain or provided the patient is admitted in your ward and is having fresh chest pain, he may manifest this phenomena, these tall and peaked T waves. Look at these tall and peak T waves. These are known as hyperacute T waves and they denote a very acute phase of ST elevation MI. So at this point, the ST elevation has not set in and it is soon going to set in. Okay. And another uh, ECG I'm sharing with you, this is again a hyperacute MI. Now in this situation, you can imagine these tall peak T waves have merged with the ST segment which is elevated. So this picture actually represents an elevated ST segment and a tall peak T wave joined together. So again, so these are ST elevations in and hyperacute T waves in V2, V3, V4, V5, V6, 1 and AVL. So extensive enterolateral ST elevation MI. Very important ECG for you to remember. Okay, so this is how an MI evolves. The very first change I've shown, I've shown to you. It may occur in a patient, it may not occur in a patient, okay, but you will definitely recognize the ST elevations. So look, this is the early ECG and this is how it evolves, okay. So this is, say, at the presentation of a given patient, you have ST elevation in lead 1, you have ST elevation in lead AVL, you have ST elevations in the leads V2, V4, V6. So this patient has anterior wall ST elevation MI. Now, 
what I want you to notice is several hours later, if this patient comes, for example, 10 hours after the chest pain or five hours, six hours or 10 hours after the chest pain, see what happens. The Q waves start to appear. Okay, so notice this is a QS complex in lead V2, a QS complex in V4, a Q, comp a Q wave in V6. So Q waves evolve and T waves start to invert. T waves have inverted. So this example, this represents an evolved ST elevation MI. Okay, you've got deep QS complexes and inverted T waves. So remember, an ST elevation MI starts with hyperacute T waves, and then you've got ST elevation, and then the ST elevation starts to come down, Q waves appear, and T waves get inverted. And over next hours and days, the T inversion resolves, Q waves generally persist. In an ST elevation MI, most patients have this marker on their ECG, the deep Q waves, which, which represents a prior transmural infarct. Okay. Now, now you know what's an ST elevation MI. Now you know how to detect it on an ECG. Two consecutive leads have to have an ST elevation at least one millivolt, at least one mm, except those lead V2, V3. They have different cutoffs. The next important point is how do you localize it? Which vessel is the culprit vessel? See, as an MBBS student, it may not be that important to you, but as a junior doctor, you need to know which vessel was the culprit vessel. This might even be asked in your INICT exam, right? So we know how the heart gets its blood supply. If you haven't read it, please read it. There's left coronary system, there's right coronary system, okay? They, they, they arise from the root of the aorta. So here is the right coronary system. Okay, the right coronary artery, here's the left main coronary artery, you know it bifurcates into a left anterior descending and a left circumflex. So that's for a separate video, the exact details of the circulation of the heart. But what you need to appreciate is that the right coronary supplies the right ventricle and right coronary also curves around the curvature of the heart, the acute margin of the heart and supplies the posterior wall of the ventricle, right? And it also, by the way, gives rise to posterior descending artery in people who are right dominant. Most people are right dominant. The right coronary artery gives rise to the posterior descending artery. Now, this is the left main bifurcating into a left anterior descending left circumflex. So as you can appreciate LAD, the left anterior descending artery supplies most of the front of the heart. Okay, so most of the interventricular septum, exactly the anterior two thirds of the interventricular septum, and it supplies the anterolateral portion of the left ventricular wall. The circumflex, the left circumflex supplies the left lateral wall. Okay, it's left lateral. The same thing you have to appreciate from this uh, from the from the diagram. So this orange color represents your RCA territory, the right coronary artery territory, it supplies the right ventricle, it supplies the posterior part of the septum, and it supplies the inferior wall of the left ventricle. So this is the territory that is supplied by RCA. What it means is that if RCA gets secluded in ST elevation MI, this is the territory which will get infarcted, the inferior posterior wall and the right ventricle. Okay. Now appreciate this territory of left anterior descending artery. It supplies the anterior wall. It supplies the anterior part of the septum. As you can see from this picture, this is the left anterior descending artery. It gives the septal branch to supply the septum. It gives the diagonal branch to supply the anterolateral wall of the left ventricle. Okay. So this part, the septum, the anterior wall and the septum is supplied by LAD. And then the circumflex, which supplies the lateral wall, which is this portion, the dark green portion. Now, they may be represented by different colors in this picture, but in real world and real life, there's an overlap. For example, there will be an overlap in the territory between LAD and LCX. There will be an overlap between LCX and RCA. So there will be points when you may be, you know, confused that whether it's an MI caused by LCX or an RCA, or sometimes a branch of an LAD or a circumflex, right? Okay, now. I've talked in the previous ECG video regarding the sex sexual reference system. Please watch those basic videos. I will, uh, you know, give the links in the description of this video to all my previous ECG videos if you haven't watched those videos. But why this is important, you need to know that the leads 2, 3 and AVF, they, they, they look at the inferior surface of the heart, right? So take a look. This lead AVF, lead 3, lead 2, they're looking at the inferior wall of the heart, right? And on the, on the same lines, the leads V1, V2 are looking more at the septum and the right side of the heart. The leads V4 to V6 
are looking at the anterolateral wall of the left ventricle, right? So in other words, as you go from lead V1 to lead V6, you go from the septum to the anterior wall to the lateral wall of the left ventricle. They are also known by the, by the same names, the septal leads, the anterior leads, the lateral leads, which means if there is inferior wall myocardial infarction, the inferior leads, 2, 3 AVF will show the ST elevation. If there's an anterior wall myocardial infarction, the anterior leads will show ST elevation. If you find ST elevation in leads V1 to V6, you will call this an anterolateral ST elevation MI. If you find ST elevation in leads V1 to V4, you will call it as anteroseptal MI. That's how these terms come. Okay. So let's uh, see some examples of these ECGs. So uh, the first thing is you see these ST elevations in leads 2, 3 and AVF. But the other thing I want you to appreciate are the so-called reciprocal chains. You know, if if the leads two three AVF, <clears throat> if the leads two three AVF are looking at the inferior surface of the heart and showing ST elevation, there are mirror images. There are the leads that look at the opposite wall, which will document opposite chains. So if the inferior leads two three AVF are documenting ST elevation, the contralateral leads one and AVL are documenting opposite ST depression. So this ECG shows ST elevation leads to 3 AVF, ST depressions in leads 1 and AVL. So you will diagnose this ECG as inferior wall myocardial infarction. Now, it's not important at, at that, at, at your level to tell me whether this inferior wall MI is caused by left circumflex occlusion or if, if it's caused by RC occlusion. That's a separate ECG. That's a little higher and we might learn in subsequent ECG, ECG videos on this channel, right? Now, take a look at this, uh, this ECG again. You're having these ST elevations in lead 3, lead AVF, and you're having uh, lead 2, 3 AVF elevations and depression in AVL, depression in 1. So again, almost a similar ECG, inferior wall MI. But what is also denoted here are the right-sided leads. You remember how we put right-sided, right precordial leads of ECG? They are the exact mirror image of the left. So if, for example, these are the left leads, if you put... A lead here as a mirror image of V3 that will be called as V3R. If you put an, an electrode here at, as a mirror image of V4 that will be called as V4R. So the right sided precordial leads which look at the right ventricle also show ST elevation. So this patient has inferior wall myocardial infarction plus right ventricular myocardial infarction. In fact, in any patient with inferior wall MI, you should routinely do two extra sets of electrodes. You should do posterior leads, the V7, V8, and V9 leads. You should routinely do right ventricle leads, the V3R, 4, V5R, V6R, okay? Right. Now, this example, uh, the third example here, as you can see, clear-cut ST elevations in lead V2, V3, V4, V5, V6, 1, and AVL. So this patient has an anterolateral ST elevation MI. Now the last ECG is the, uh, the last example of this video, but this is a, an, an important one that you have to recognize. Yes, it's easy to appreciate that there are ST elevations in 2, 3, AVF, and there are depressions in AVL and 1. So you make a diagnosis of inferior wall MI, but there's one that you have to take a look at ECG as a whole. because. Before you comment on ST segment, before you comment on T waves, you have to take a look at the rhythm, the rate, the X's and all the basic interpretation of ECG. And as if you can appreciate, this ECG also shows a complete heart block. Okay, so notice there is no correlation, there is no agreement between the P waves and the QRS, you know. They are totally independent of each other. This patient has inferior wall MI and a complete heart block. And in fact, in a patient of inferior wall MI with a slow heart rate, you should look for these blocks, uh, an AV block of different degrees, which is what our next ECG video will be about. It will be about AV blocks. So stay tuned on the channel. We'll learn about more useful ECGs in the coming days. Thank you.